a small talk about this cathode ray tube. I bought it on a flea market quite long ago, say five years ago or so. This beautiful tube and the uh, uh, type number is DG732, cathode ray tube. The good thing of this tube is, or was, that it only needed a deflection voltage on their plates. And here are these deflection plates, this one and this one and this one and this one, was very small, say maximum 10 volts, uh, uh, with maximum 10 volts voltages, static voltages or varying voltages in that range, the whole screen here could be covered. So over the complete screen, and I want to try that and of course uh, I'm not going to make an oscilloscope. Um, I think in a certain way it makes no sense. Of course you can do it and gain a lot of experience. And I've done it in the past. I've made one oscilloscope uh, going, by the way, to maximum 40 kilohertz anyway. Again to that beautiful small booklet of Philips and uh, here are all the say this is the introduction the tube is of 1957 and I have to scroll with my mouse and mouse that's what I mean and that's a little bit problematic, but anyway, let's go and look for this beautiful tube. They advertised it as a low voltage cathode ray tube. And re really, here it is. In this box, by the way, it was sold by Siemens, but I think it was from Philips. At least I have the data sheet from Philips and anyway, that's all that there is to tell. There are perhaps more interesting things to tell. Uh, the data sheet is of course very important. Uh, well, I have to go here again. The tube. Here a complete description. You can download it, download it on the World Wide Web. It's in English, so I will stop for a while so that you can read it. And of course, these tubes are perhaps, perhaps, not perhaps, they are no longer made, they are obsolete. But they are very, uh, are very interesting. When you can find such a tube or another uh, cathode ray tube on, on a flea market, you can do very interesting things with it. So let's go at first go to my drawing that's here. I hope it's visible from this distance. There's perhaps not so much light. But to see what happens in such a cathode ray tube is that there are there is a filament here. That filament is heated up, so electrons are emitted. They go through a certain cylinder, that it is the Weyneld cylinder, and then they are say um, attracted by the screen, and the screen is of course the anode. So that's here, this screen. On the inner side there is a fluorescent layer. When the electron beam hits the screen here, you will see a bright dot. And you can focus that dot. And the focusing is done by a focus electrode. And that is, as far as I could see, I, I had to study the whole data sheet, G grid 3. So here is what I found at first sight, and please correct me if I'm wrong. These are the, say, first IDs. 
first site IDs. And I have copied, in fact, it from the Philips data sheet. So I, know I will also show exactly the Philips data sheet. F means filament. So here are all these pins on the back side. These pins. And there is a kind of notch that's here and we count here we count from that notch to say the left side or the right side and I have um, say counted it from uh, say this back side so there we have pin 1, 2, 3, 4 etc etc two pins have no connection and here is the wire here are the the wires to the different electrodes inside that cathode ray tube. And often you see uh, when you say study data sheets of cathode ray tubes, always the the, na the name that this is called a grid. But in reality, it is no grid. Uh, it is in fact sometimes at least for the Weyneld cylinder and other other cylinders um, it is a cylindrical grid in some cases you can study that further I cannot go too deep into that because I only have 15 minutes on my camera so often a grid is named uh, a grid but it is a cylindrical grid to focus the electron beam and that's done by uh, equipotential uh, static charges inside the tube that focus the electron beam going from the uh, cathode, the heated cathode that's here, to the anode. And here are the deflection plates. Uh, electrons are negative, so when they pass through all these grids between arrows, uh, they meet here uh, two sets of plates. One plate is the horizontal plate and one the um, vertical plate. And by say adding static voltages to these plates, or not static, you can um, um, say give the beam, the electron beam, a certain direction. Because electrons are negative and say when this plate is positive the electron beam moves in this way that means that you on the screen here this screen will see uh, a dot given a situation where the focusing is okay so when the focus is okay you have a sharp dot in the middle of the screen and uh, say take in mind that you see here now two plates horizontally positioned and two plates vertically positioned and when you add voltages to that uh, static voltages or moving voltages to these two plates you can move the dot completely over the screen from the left to the right and from um, up to down and there we have our say a classic ID of uh, an electrostatic oscilloscope, say an old uh, old uh, old way at oscilloscope, so not a digital os digital oscilloscope, of course, but a classic old school oscilloscope. So these are the deflection plates, two sets of electrostatic deflection plates. So what happens here uh, is, uh, is given by the voltages that are uh, given to the different plates. Positive here, negative here, uh, positive here, negative here. And when you say switch the positive and negative here, it will mean that the electron beam on the screen moves from the one side to the other side and when that static voltage uh, goes slowly, 
you will see a slow movement of the dot on the screen here. But when it gets quick, you will see a, a line. Because the human uh, eye cannot follow the uh, too quick movement of that dot on the screen. So, one moment again for this. And of course I'm now on the first stage of trying to make this circuit. Uh, and perhaps it will not succeed. It surely will succeed, can succeed. I've used here, say, the classical high voltage transformer that I want to use, perhaps. And if not, I think this is a more or less a informative video. So, uh, you go to the data sheet from Philips, technical data, and I only want to give these technical data. I will focus on what you can find this document on the World Wide Web. Heater voltage, filament voltage, 6.3 volt, 0.3 ampere. That's more or less classical. Focusing electrostatic. And there are two versions of this tube. One with, uh, with symmetrical deflection plates and one with non-symmetrical uh, deflection plates. That doesn't matter much for all, say, the, the voltages that can be used. So here is are the... These are the capacitances, by the way, inside such a tube. It's a glass tube. There are always capacitances between all the electrodes. That, that would not very interesting. Only interesting when you want to use such a tube on extremely high um, frequencies. In that case, it can play a role. I have to scroll again with my mouse. Operating characteristics are very important. Um, grid number two and grid number four, that is in fact here the screen anode going to here. Am I right? Well, let me see. I think, yes, grid number two, grid number four. And this is important, here, the anode, this is the wire inside the cathode ray tube. There is a wire inside, connection inside, and it goes here to grid four, and it goes also to grid two. So these three electrodes elements in the tube are connected and that's why you read it here grid number two and grid number four voltage 500 volts that is say the anode voltage classic anode voltage and here we have grid number one a visual extinction of the focused spot that is say the Weyland cylinder and you can pinch off there the electrode beam that goes here from the uh, cathode to the uh, anode that means that the screen gets dark. I only have 50, approximately 30 seconds. Thanks for watching by the way. I'm sure you can find this uh, tube on the world wide web. So let's finally look at this beautiful tube. And I hope I can get it working. If not, please uh, say, uh, you can use this information when you want to work with a cathode ray tube in one of my books. I have also described, talked, written, 
about making a very simple oscilloscope.